Welcome to the podcast of thesportsnotebook.com. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Flaherty, uh, here today with uh, Steve Rhodes, and we are here today for another episode of uh, Trivia Time. And, you know, for those of you that uh, saw our first episode, uh, the premise of this is pretty simple. Like, we have one question, and I'm going to be frank, I don't know what that question is. I know it's going to be something pertaining to NFL coaches in honor of the late Don Shula, you know, who's, who inspired us to, to, to do this uh, show here today. But Steve has developed one question, which will open itself into a wide range of multiple answers, into the treasure trove of NFL history, if you will. And, um, and we go from there. So, um, you know, I, I'm going cold, uh, just like the rest of you here. And I'm going to get ready to hand off the show to Steve here momentarily. But uh, Steve, before we pivot to the show, you wanted an opening tirade? Um, oh, oh, yeah. But, um, well, I tell you what. The whole world about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, lost a legend. And um, and we're referring to um, who Dan just spoke about. We lost Don Shula, um, who passed away, I believe, at the age of 90 down in Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, while, while every football fan knows Don Shula, I, I, I'm, you know, and there was solid media coverage, you know, when he passed away. But still, I don't think it was maybe to the level that it should have been. I mean, this guy was an iconic legend as a coach in the NFL. I mean, he guided uh, two different teams to Super Bowl victories. That's right. Yep. Um, you know, one of the few people to to actually do that and um he he was always classy. I mean, like Dan, do you remember any controversies with Shula really? I mean, like No, I mean never anything that came up. No. I mean, and the guy um I mean, an impeccable record. He won at multiple places. He took over teams that were um I, I believe, certainly with the Dolphins that weren't having any success and turned them into winners. Um, he also has that distinction, which this one's probably the more um, the one that gets more credit, is the only coach of an undefeated NFL team. And mm-hmm. here we are years later, um, and still nobody else has, has, has you know been coach of an NFL team to go undefeated for an entire season, uh, including the Super Bowl there, the Patriots uh, from a few years ago. Um, so Don Shula – 328, 156 and six. So he won over two thirds of his games. We mentioned um, won two Super Bowls. Classy guy, um, great coach, and you know he got plenty of attention. But I think that he's 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 in the elite of the elite. And um, so I just want to tip my hat to him and uh, and say that um, you know he's 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 one of the very very top coaches I believe um, in NFL history, which is kind of what we're going to be discussing here shortly. Yeah, so I mean, this is actually a good point, and you know, and just so our listeners know, I had no idea what Steve's uh, tirade was going to be, and and but it served its purpose because he's actually got me agitated about this now, and I had never given it a second thought until a second ago, and it's regarding the lack of media hype surrounding Shula's passing, and that's completely accurate now that I think about it. I mean, there was like a blurb on the news, and that was it. And I want you to think about that. This comes in a context of a sports-starved landscape where everybody is desperate for something to talk right. about sports-related. Right. I and like, where's like, and in an era where there's all kinds of channels, you know, right down to our podcast here, where people are looking for things to talk about, and nobody could think of to talk about Don Shula. That's actually you. Again, I hadn't even thought of it, but you've got me on board with that tirade now here. So. Yeah, yeah well. and like people are, I mean, the thing getting the most media attention right now, and I think it's been a very good special, we won't talk too much about it, but the Bulls' last stand is the ESPN feature. That's yeah. Coming mm-hmm. Sunday, and that's gotten tons of, of media attention. I've watched some, and I think it's a very good show. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we're but enjoying it. I mean, my wife, who is not a sports fan, is enjoying watching it with me. So, as, yeah. yeah, mine is as well. Um, but um, anyway, so... It's amazing, though, that we've got a lot of um, attention right now being being placed on, or we've got all this time, and, you know, and yet Shula's passing was just kind of like, you know, maybe the bottom of page one kind of thing. I happened to be in Florida um, at the time when he passed away, so probably got more media attention a there. more there, yeah. But nationally, not on the big on the big scope of things, um, I don't I don't think it got you know, as much as it deserved, let's just say that. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that's exactly right. Yeah, no, gr- great tirade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so I guess this will be episode two, right, of Trivia Time with the this Dream. This is episode two of Trivia Time with Rain Dan and the Dream. Yep, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so um, basically the general 
conversation I want to have with trivia question, you know, built in is the best coaches of all time, looking at it from basically uh, five different lenses. Okay. So, um, and I'll, I'll rattle off those real quick, but then the trivia will be trying to fill some of these lists of what I asked for, Dan. So, okay. And, of, and there will be overlap between the lists, but on my list here um, of my proper research, don't, don't scream. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm getting my pen out here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually have 44 different coaches on the list that fit, okay. that fit one of these five um, I would call them criteria for being a great coach. Okay? okay. Some might be on all the lists. Some might be on one of the lists and so forth. And I'm, and also I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent this because there's a couple of cases on here that I clearly don't want. These are, I don't think these are the 44 best coaches of all time. I'm saying we're looking at this question from five. We can look at it from five different, um, basically statistical parameters. Sure. And it's a great way to start when you're identifying the best coaches. Yeah, of narrowing your field of candidates. Yeah, correct. But so yeah, but just because so, like somebody could be on the list and maybe you'd rank them tenth, and somebody or no, I'm, somebody could not be on the list and you might rank them tenth overall. But some and somebody could be on the list because they're in one category and you wouldn't have them anywhere near, you know, the the, the elite of all time coaches. It sounds like that's correct. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so the first, uh, I'll give I'll give you the five lists first, or the five categories. Okay. Um, and then, but I'll just I want to just go over them quickly, and then we'll start with number one. Okay. Okay. Five criteria identified, and I, I don't know. I just kind of brainstorm these, but um, so you're when you're looking for the best coach ever, what kind of things are you looking for? So the first list that we'll start with in a second is 150 wins. Okay. It, did you get 150 wins? If you got 150 wins, you're doing something right. And uh, Dan, as our quick, um, what, how many people do you think are on that list? How many coaches? Honestly, geez, that's a great one because I don't even know that I have a good guess. I mean, geez, I mean, Marty Schottenheimer hit the 200 win mark, and that's what kind of what jumps into my mind. So yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know. I don't have a good guess on that. That list is 19. So only 19 coaches have ever won 150 games. So it's a it's a pretty elite group. Yeah. Okay. The second list. Um, and of course, I told you there's some overlap between these, but there's each list, there's new people being added too. So the, the next list is the guys. And the, oh, and by the way, the 150 wins does not require any winning percentage of any sort. It's just, yeah, total 150, however long it took you. To, and right. realistically, there can't be too many coaches that, that weren't good that lasted long enough to get 150 yeah. wins. And let me just say this. There's 19 on the list for the 150 zero have a lo have a losing record for a career. True. Okay. So yeah. All, I was saying like, yeah, that's to win 10 games over a 15 year stretch, which is what that would be. Yeah. It's pretty hard. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, nobody, nobody qualified, nobody that had 150 wins actually had a below 500 record. They were of course varying winning percentages, but um, so list two is we're getting a little more strict on the winning. They have to have a hundred wins but a 600 winning percentage. So 100 so wins it. with a six, minimum 600 winning percentage. Correct. 100 wins with a 600 winning percentage. And some of them, the, the 150 guys are also going to be on this. But basically you're putting in the parameter of you had to win 60% of your games, which is tough to do. Yeah. And also, but we lowered the win limit a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Right. Third list, the third, third, lens we're going to look through is lowering it again so we're getting we only need 50 wins in the third list but you got to have a 650 winning percentage okay All so right. the reason is i guess the overall philosophy on this is i look at it as the 150 you had to coach either a really long time and win a lot of games or coach maybe a mid-level time and be be good at it or if you coach a short time be be even better at it does that make sense no, it does, yeah, because I can think of, like, some coaches that were really good for a compressed period of time. Like, right. I've got names circulated in my head that when we get to the guessing point, I'm going to put out there. And then okay. other coaches, well, I'll just throw the two names I'm thinking about that, and they're the complete contrast. You have Marty Schottenheimer on one side for the long, consistent coach, and Jimmy Johnson on the other side of this uber-successful, you know, yeah. coach in a really tight window. 
So like Perfect. you're you're trying to create a window where both of those guys can get in there. Yep. And, and I will it. tell you, um, th those are two of the forty four names total on the list. Okay. All right. So the, the this list. The, I'm sorry. The, this list, the six fifty. Uh, I'm sorry. Fifty wins minimum. A 650 winning percentage is 13 coaches long. That's all it is. Because the 650 is a pretty, pretty tall order. That's well. hard, yeah. The, uh, the previous list I didn't mention is 20 long. Um, and uh, by the way, I also wanted, wanted all these lists to be, you know, roughly around, you know, that 15 or 20 in each one. So it's 20 long with the 100 win guys and 600 winning percentage. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now the fourth part is very simple. Um, so the fourth lens out of the five is very basic. I mean, people, a lot of people say, you know, we have a friend even that bottom line, you got to win championships. <laughs> bottom line. Bottom so, line it. So bottom line is, you know, lots of coaches have won championships, you know, and, and we're saying Super Bowls or it can be titles too, like. Um, and I believe this also includes as in pre Super Bowl era winning the NFL right. or something. Okay. Or I, I think it also this also would include the AFL because remember that would. Oh, be okay. Great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, for like a Hank Stram winning the AFL titles. Yeah, or yeah. You're still pro football and you're winning at the highest level of, of you know of that yeah. you could. So anyway, the the fourth list is 25 names long, and it just basically means. You had to win two championships. Multiple championships. Okay. Multiple. Because because that really um, you know weeds out some guys. A lot of guys won one, but you know if you win two, you're starting to get up there in the elite. So there's only 25 coaches that have ever done that. Um, the fifth and last list um, is the smallest list of all. It's only 11 names long, and I, I added this one just because there's some interesting names on it. But 11 names. Um, a 675 winning percentage with no stipulations just you had to be you had to win basically significant or over well over two-thirds of your games yeah so say like so that you're averaging somewhere between 11 and 5 and 12 and 4 per year with a winning percentage like that i think right and there's only 11 names on the list of of uh, guys that that had a, a six seventy five for so this, yeah, no no stipulations. Just for your whole career, you won at sixty seven point five percent or better. Yep. So, um, without further ado, why don't we with let's let's go to the Rain Dan computer and um, what, what kind of the easiest list probably or one of the kind of just to get the the, the names flowing here. Um, the hundred fifty wins guys. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of just check them off here as we go. You mentioned Marty Schottenheimer. Schottenheimer's actually eighth on the all-time wins list, so he's off. And um, I guess since I had the opening tirade, I get to, to do the honor of saying, "We, you know who number one on the, the all-time <laughs> wins list is? That's Don, Don Shula. Shula. Um, think about that, too. Like That's another reason to give him more media attention. He's the number one coach for wins at 328. Yep, won so, more football games than everybody else. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, well, you know, our, our personal hero, Joe Gibbs, is going to be on there. Yeah, Joe Gibbs is on there, but he barely makes it. He's 154. And it, it, Actually, it, that's, I get, now that I think that doesn't surprise me, yeah, because it's um, – Well, I guess those of us that remember, you know, that are roughly the same age as us, you know, grew up and are born like born in 1970 or thereabouts, remember how really he had a pretty long career and actually came back too. And that's what it takes to get the 100 – and win at a high high level, a high percentage. And well, he a, came back so he could get the 150 wins and be <laughs> on our first list here in this show here several years later. I mean, it's, you know, it all, it all makes sense did. now. So, yeah. I think he did add um, – yeah, he would have definitely not made it without those extra – I think. It was oh, yeah, because yeah, he made the playoffs twice in that second term. Yeah, he, had a, uh, he, did, yeah, he won about 30, 30 to 32 games in that second term. So, yeah, I mean, he yeah. definitely needed it. Uh, yeah, so Gibbs is on there. Um, um, you, can, you can keep you can keep throwing things out there. I can I can add some too as well. Uh, uh, Papa Bear George Hallis is going to be on there. Papa Bear is the number two guy. You got, yep. the, we got the, He's only ten behind uh, Shula, three hundred eighteen. Um, obviously, brilliant career, and for Bears fans, he's like their god of all time. So, um, yep. probably the only guy you could you could compare to uh, Thicka and uh, <laughs> <a> Bears <laughs> fan, and, and and that they wouldn't punch you in the mouth. 
So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much right. Yeah, that's so, exactly. Right. So who was who was Papa Bear's uh, arch nemesis during those years? Uh, Curly uh, Lambo. Curly Lambo from the Packers chalks in at number five. Okay, I didn't know how long he was there, but that's an awfully yeah, long time ago. But he did, he did get the 150, okay. He had way more success than I thought. And, of course, you know, living in Wisconsin, you hear Lambeau Field and you hear about Curly Lambeau. But really, I guess I didn't fully understand how great um, he was as a coach and his teams were. Um, he had 226 wins, fifth best all time, and a 631 winning percentage. Wow. That, that so, is... Yeah, I, and I guess like with him and Papa Bear, I always kind of like went to them more as just the guys who built the league in its early days. You know, I didn't right. really have much of a grasp of how much winning they, you know, may or may not have done. Well, it was funny because their uh, recipe for building the league was um, winning every Sunday. That's, <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> we show up and we win football games. That's what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as long as we're on Packer Legends, it, it, did Vince Lombardi get to 150? He did not. So okay. He, he will be on one of these lists at least, but um, – Yeah, we know he's going to be uh, on the list, but he's not going to be on – While you're mentioning him, though, so I mean, because um, uh, Vince Lombardi, uh, I'm looking it up here right now as we speak, way, way fewer wins than what anyone would expect. Um, and just one – he had um, – just one second. 96 wins. He did not even reach the century mark for wins. Wow. This so he's going to be on well, he's going to be on our multiple titles list and yeah. he's got to be on the the 50 wins. But actually I think he could be on the 67.5% win percentage too probably. So. Yes. Okay, so yeah, yeah while we're on Lombardi we'll just finish him off. So he's on 3 of the 5. He does he, he had under 100 wins though, but he does make the 650 with 50 wins. He makes the two plus championships and he makes the 675 with no parameters. His career winning percentage, third of all time, 738. That's insane. That's, yeah, and again, and they only play because, well, because he came to the Packers, I want to say 1960 was his first year. Um, maybe, it was, maybe it was 59, but, 59. but they, it was only a, what was that? 59. 59. Okay. All right. Yeah. So he made the championship game his second year in 1960. And they only played a 12 game season for a lot, you know, that a lot of that time he was in Green Bay. So yeah, it yeah. would have taken him a while to, and then of course he left after the 68 season to briefly yeah. retire, came back with the Redskins, might have won more there, but you know, then the cancer that took his life ultimately, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, surfaced at in that 19, point. In 1970. So he coached 59 through 69. Great winning percentage. Um, if you want a great stat about him, he's third third best. Um, obviously, all the championships are what he's known for. But And he um, he only lost 34 games in his whole career. So it's like, <laughs> if you were sitting down and you really researched, you could probably, like, memorize every loss that Lombardi ever had. That's, so, <laughs> and he probably did, too. You know, that's <laughs> – yeah. <laughs> um, and he's in the he's in an exclusive 700 winning percentage uh, club. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm not counting guys that were like two and zero oh and in interim or whatever. But right. um, he's he's in the the 700 winning percentage club, which we can maybe talk about later. But yes, he's on that list. So um, how about the guy in New England right now? You think he's on this 100? Yep, uh, Bill Belichick has actually got to be moving up that list because I know there's discussion like, will he last long enough to catch Shula? For the for the top spot, so he's got to be over 150. Yep, um, he's number three on the all-time list at 273. So he's 55 wins from Shula, and I do believe um, I want to say this does not include postseason, but I, I I guess I'd have to double check. I'm that. pretty sure those stats generally do not. Okay, so uh, two he's 55 wins away. Let's just say it's gonna be tough. 11. That's five five years at eleven wins. So can he coach successfully or at a high level for five, maybe six more years? Yeah, and I mean, and geez, I mean, and, and he's at the point in his career where like one rebuilding year, like if this year doesn't turn out to be very good with Stidham at quarterback, that could yeah. sink the whole effort right there. So yeah, I think um, yeah, it's a big year for Belichick in his you know his first his basically his first year without Brady. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it's a big year for both Brady and for Belichick, you know, seeing who's, That's right. 
survive with without the other. So, but he's number three on the list. Um, any other? Uh, Tom Landry will be on this list. You're just going right down it. Belichick was three. Tom Landry is four. Okay, Landry's I actually. <laughs> Landry's got 250 wins on the nose. And uh, mm-hmm. us Redskins fans growing up, I think out of those 250 wins career, about 150 of them are against the Redskins. Yeah, that's right. I think most All of the them West- on Thanksgiving Day, too, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 89 of them on Thanksgiving Day and all of them in the last two minutes. So I'm going to completely segue off topic here. We're stuck playing the Cowboys again on Thanksgiving this year. I mean, like, oh, could we boy. ever just get a trip to Detroit or something like that? <laughs> you know, like, you always got to send yeah. us into Dallas. You know, I so. noticed I noticed on the schedule the triple header. Yeah, they, they like to put that Redskins-Cowboys. So it usually, the last few years it hasn't worked out well. Or actually, really, it never – for the most part, hasn't hardly ever worked out well for the Redskins on that. Team. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> and I'm assuming that's in Dallas because they're always one of the teams. Yeah, it always is. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. So, um, okay, who else do we? Um, Bill Parcells has got to be to 150. Bill Parcells is 150. Uh, he's 13th overall, 172 wins, so he's well above the 150, and um, not as good of a winning percentage as you might think with Parcells. Um, how many titles did he win, Rain Dan? Uh, Parcells, two. Yep, Parcells won two. But um, I guess it was because part of the time, you know, when he first took over for the, for the Giants, they yeah, were he not had a 312 good. in one year to start his career in 1983. Yeah, but a 569 winning percentage, which is solid, but... I was about to say, like, I think if you, when you factor in a lot of the context, and you remember, like, he took on multiple rebuilding projects after he left the Giants. Like, he took over the Jets, got him to an AFC championship game, took over the Patriots when they're, like, 2-14 and 14 and terrible. So, like, he always was, like, eating it for that first year. And then... Yeah. And then his final run in Dallas really wasn't that all that great, so that pulled him down too. So uh. yeah, so yeah, you've got him. Um, um, any other guesses? A lot of them are. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Weeb Eubank out there. Oh, good guess. He is on my list of the 44 on one of these lists, but um, Weeb Eubank is not. Um, let me see here. I'm holding him. He's not on the, the 150 win list. He's got to be on the 100 win list then, I'm thinking. He is – just one second. Oh, my notes here aren't – Weeb Eubank. Yep. Um, 130 wins. Oops. 130 wins for Eubank. So um, – yeah. But, and and for, our, for our younger listeners that might not immediately recognize him, he coached uh, Joe Namath's New York Jets in, um, in 1968 when they won the Super Bowl in the historic upset. Uh, beat, beat Don Shula's Colts, actually, uh, in that game as an 18-point underdog. And the AFL winning that game was kind of what put the AFL in public perception on a par with the NFL and kind of helped make the league what it is today, set the stage for the merger a couple of years later. Yeah, so, a very sign- historically significant coach. I think if you're talking biggest upsets ever in the Super Bowl, you're probably starting with Super Bowl three Jets over the Colts, or you're looking at the the you know the other one is obviously the undefeated Patriots losing losing to the Giants. Yeah, that's so, right. I guess take your pick on either one of those. You could probably make a good argument either way. Um, and maybe we could go to Vegas to just look at the line and see. Well, what it's definitely going to be the Jets based on the point spread because that was an 18-point spread. I mean, no wow. Super Bowl in our lifetime is ever going to get up to, like, that level again. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, and a little-known fact about that, I won't go into detail on it, but, like, Joe Namath did not really have a great game in that. <laughs> they, they no, he of, didn't. No, it's – the defense. Yeah, now before before the name of you know fans out there go crazy, like he he was the de facto offensive coordinator. He did call an excellent game, but like but Matt Snell was the statistical guy, the running back who was really pounding yeah. the yardage. And Namath played mistake free. Basically, he was a good game manager. He deserves yeah. credit for his role as offensive coordinator and running it. But as a passer, no, he didn't have a big game that day. Yep. And when you hear game manager these days, you start thinking like guys like Andy Dalton. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, okay, I'm, 
I got I got a couple more guesses here for the 150 okay. wins. Uh, Hank Stram. Um, Hank Stram is is on my overall list. However, but not there. Oh, okay. Here's the irony about your last two guesses, Dan. They're you know they both coached around the same era. You know what? Yeah. But um, both Hank Stram and Weeb Weeb Eubank did not qualify on any of these lists until the two plus championships. Really. So, okay. The reason, wow. uh, oh, Eubank, Eubank, just to touch on that again, um, he only, Weeb Eubank was 130 and 129 and 7. So he's one game over 500. Oh, okay. So even though he had the 100 wins, he did not qualify yeah. on the winning percentage. Okay. No, he had to have a 600 winning percentage. Wait, so even... when, was his, uh, when was his second title besides the, the Super Bowl one we just talked about? Um, this has him for three championships. Okay. So, that would be um, – he would have – what is it, AFL titles then? It would have been the AFL, yeah. And the Jets used to be called the New York Titans back in the day, like early yeah, 60s. Got, the day. Um, 1958, 1959, and 1968. So he won back-to-back titles with the Colts. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. We, yeah, won, in the NFL. It wasn't the AFL at all. Yeah, okay. 58 and 59, um, before the Super Bowl, of course, he won yeah. that. Title, so, but he doesn't qualify on any of these lists, nor does Hank Stram until the two plus titles. Hank Stram, I think it's the same story. Um, Stram was 131, a little better winning percentage. One, um, he had a 574 winning percentage mm-hmm. with 131 wins, so he doesn't quite meet those um, winning percentage marks, but he does qualify then with the. And he, um, Stram also had three titles. Yeah, because he won Super Bowl Four in 1969 with the Chiefs. And I know he would have won a couple AFL titles with the Chiefs slash Houston Texans, which was the franchise's original starting point. 1962 Dallas Texans? Yeah, the Dallas Texans. Yeah, they became the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, good call on that. Um, because the, the Cowboys, as we know it, were an expansion team. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, the Dallas Texans and the Dallas Cowboys are separate organizational entities. Correct. Just like the Houston Oilers and the Houston Texans. Texans are, yeah, exactly. That's right. But um, he also won one with the Chiefs in 66, which I believe was the last year before. No, actually, hold it. I mean, that's that's interesting because that would have been the first Super Bowl, so he would have had to go and play Lombardi's Packers, so we might not be able to give him credit for that. Okay. But he was Super Bowl champs again in 69. Yeah, so right. So he so he got still it. got the two wins, but I see. I, I, I'm I'm on the pro foot. I'm going to use my profootballreference.com as my site, mm-hmm. but I also am going to take ish. Oh, I think the reason why Dan was because remember they were considered separate leagues until like 1969 or 70. Se- yeah, well, yes, 1970 was the merger, and that's when the AFL became the AFC. You know, and the oh. NFL, you know, and the, the NFC was created, and that's when they came under the all under the NFL umbrella. So year. yes, at a site like Pro Football Reference, that will you know cite it you know very rigidly that that will get yeah. treated as a separate championship unto itself. Yeah. What and of course, to this day, you, that you still get the trophy, like you know, in both conference championship games after you win it. So uh, right, but it, it, 1970, you said, is the year that that happened. Yeah, 1970 was the merger. Yeah. So um, not to not to downgrade or anything, but like essentially I think the site is looking at it as the first three or so years, three or four years, it was kind of an exhibition game after the two championship games. Well, certainly that's uh, without question um, how it was perceived in the public. It was not because everybody saw the NFL as just so vastly superior, which is like, what's the point? You know, and I mentioned like in the Jets winning was huge. It caught people's attention. But like so, then the Chiefs go back the next year. They're the AFL representative, representative, and they're playing uh, the Vikings. And the Chiefs are a two touchdown underdog in that game. And if the Chiefs would have gotten blown out, everyone would have probably just been like, "Okay, well, yeah, there was just that one fluke year when the Jets pulled the upset." But the AFL is not in the same class. Mm-hmm. But when the Chiefs went ahead and won, and now you've got two wins for the AFL, two wins for the NFL, and that's a good score, point. Now it started perceived as like, "Hey, these this is legitimate." So, so Vegas and, and, and the general public was not giving the AFL any credit, even after the, the Jets' big win. And until and so, so think about it: two years, 
over a two touchdown favorite uh, from the AFL beats the NFL the NFL team in the, in the Super Bowl. Yes, that's right. And then yeah, I think I mean, people then realized, hey, maybe these two leagues are roughly about equal. You know, there's good teams in one and good teams in the other, but you know, there's no reason to believe that that they can't compete with them. So exactly. He's, he's still that's right. Point line. So. Um, but yeah, but Stram only qualifies um, on the two plus championship list because he doesn't quite meet the criteria for winning percentage, or he didn't have 150 wins. Yeah. Okay. Um, did Ditka get to the 150 wins? No. No. Um, Ditka. He's got to be on the hundred. Um, hold on one second. Um, I want to make sure before I say this because uh, I'm not too far from Chicago here. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't downgrade him if you're going to get it wrong. So. Yeah, um, Mike Ditka. Oh wait, Mike Ditka, 121 wins. Um, but for the purposes of this conversation and these lists, he does not qualify under any of the criteria because remember the hundred wins. Yeah, he needed a 600. He didn't have a 600. That I, I bet his tenure with the Saints killed him on that. So 560. Hmm. And he took over pretty bad Bears teams. Or pretty yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, so, he had a couple of rough years before they started winning. Yep, 121 and 95. And I'm sure in <laughs> Chicago and the Windy City, it still kind of hurts. Um, they they all say that they only won one championship with that 85 team. But uh, so he doesn't qualify on any of these. Criteria. Okay. All right. Um, a couple of names. A couple of names that jumped into my mind. Uh, a rival of the Bears, uh, Bud Grant. Bud Grant is. It's it's funny in researching this. Bud Grant is just above Joe Gibbs on the wins. He is number. Uh, Gibbs is eighteen. Bud Grant is seventeen. And I looked at their numbers are almost interchangeable with Bud Grant at 17 and Joe Gibbs at 18. Of course, there's one very, very notable exception, and that's, yeah. that, um, that's that Joe Gibbs has three Super Bowl trophies in his living room and Bud Grant has none. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Bud went there four times, but uh, you know, has an 0-4 hanging on him. Well, yeah, speaking but, of 0-4s, is Marv Levy on that list? Did he, did he get 150 wins? Marv Levy makes the list. Uh, hold on. Not the 150 list, though. Um, hold on. I'm... The hundred list, perhaps. I'm scrolling through. I maybe I'm wrong on this. Hold on. Um, he, I don't think. I think he's similar to. He's similar to Ditka. He Marv Levy. Okay, Marv Levy does is just like Ditka. He doesn't qualify. He's he's real close in a lot of ways. And of course, he got to the Super Bowl all those times. But he was 143 on the win, so he doesn't quite get okay. there. And his winning percentage, surprise, this is also surprisingly low for all those great teams he had, 561 on the winning percentage. So was okay, he yeah. on? He may have – I got to double check. I want to say he might have coached the Colts before, or maybe there was the Chiefs before he took over the Bills. And it was like at a point when whichever organization he was with was really down. I think it was the Chiefs. Um, well, the rain, Dan, is correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, now we're figuring out why his winning percentage was so bad. Um, he started with the Chiefs for five years, and I'll just rattle them off real quick: four and twelve, seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven, three and six in the strike. Yeah, there we then, go. Yeah, that's. Remember, he takes over a bad Bills franchise. Uh, looks like midway through '86, two and five, seven and eight to start out. So he was well, well under 500. Then he starts all the big winning there with the Bills and getting them to the Super Bowl. So. But um, Marv does not quite qualify just because he doesn't – he's only seven wins short. Maybe he'll come back for that. <laughs> and he's, um, he's uh, only 561 winning percentage. So, um, But he was always great for those um, – he was always great for, like, quoting Aristotle and that. And, like, I know. <laughs> when he had some philosophical quote after a Super Bowl loss. Well, like, well, as Churchill always said. <laughs> <laughs> No, he is he is a personal favorite of mine, though. Just I still think that going to the Super Bowl four straight years is I kind of yep. put it up there with the Patriots going 16 and 0. It's like it's just something I never thought I would see and don't expect to see again. You know, it's Yep. So in the in the course of our discussion here, I'm adding kind of um an asterisk list, if you call it, or um a, another notables, and Ditka and Levy are 
great for that list. Yeah, they're perfect for that. Absolutely. We're talking good coaches or, you know, memorable, great coach, you know, very good coaches. Um, they definitely need to be part of that conversation. So, yeah. Okay. Um, gotta be, gotta be on the 151 list. Paul Brown. Paul Brown. Yep. It was about time for him. He's, he's the only kind of old timer left on the list. Everybody else is, or I'm sorry, there's one other one that well, the guy that clocks in at 19. But anyway, Paul Brown is number six and great career. Um, 213, 104, and nine. And um, he did win um, seven championships. Yep. Yeah. So, great, great mind with both the Browns and the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both uh, Northern and Southern part of Ohio he won at. So that's right. Yeah. Uh, did he win championships with both? I didn't win a championship in Cincinnati, but he got the Bengals to the playoffs. And this was kind of like in the early years of the mid 70s. And uh, he also identified a guy that I know we're going to get to eventually. He hired Bill Walsh as offensive coordinator when he was with oh. the Bengals. So, yeah. I'm just, I'm just researching. I'm just looking at it now here. He's got a very, very interesting career. All of his championships, um, and it's in the AAFC. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, the, the All-American Football Conference, yeah, because the yeah, Browns so dominated uh, that. When I said seven championships, those are included, just so you know. So he's yeah, got and, they, and they should be. Yeah, that was a good league in its, in yeah. its day. They, he won four in the AAFC and um, three in the NFL. But here's a very interesting thing I just see. His first five years as a head coach, for, for Paul Brown we're talking, he won a championship his first five years. <laughs> he becomes the head coach of the Cleveland Browns in 1946 and then wins four straight with the Browns. Then he goes – then the Browns switch. He's still with the Browns. He switches in, in 1950. They go to the NFL, and he wins that championship. So five in a row out of him. And then he did win two more in back-to-back -back years in 54 and 55 as okay. NFL champs with the Browns. And as you mentioned, um, his last uh, about seven or eight, eight years were with the Bengals and, you, and uh, got him into the playoffs where he – he went 0 3 in the playoffs, so he didn't win a game, but he, he did get three playoff games there. With the yeah, that's right. And, that, and those are the days when, if you made the playoffs, you're automatically in the divisional round in well, four teams. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're one game from the conference championship. Basically. Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, so another, a couple other names here. I've got to keep them fresh while as they come to my mind. A uh, very modern name who just hoisted the Lombardi trophy, Andy Reid. Yep, you're going right down the list here, Dan. Paul Brown was six. This one shocked me. Andy Reid is seventh all time in wins. That actually, that, that doesn't as soon as I you know as I started thinking about it, I was like, yeah, he's with Philadelphia a long time. I mean, that in itself, you know, he, he might have cleared one fifty there. So two hundred and seven wins, only one hundred twenty eight losses. So, you want any guess on what Andy Reid's career winning percentage is, Dan, Rain Dan? No, I don't. I mean, uh, you said 207, 128. I, I can't do that number. That 618, quickly. which is excellent. That's, and, he, and he's done it all in the age of parody, too. Man. That's, yeah. He's basically never had bad teams, which I think has helped him. Exactly. And, yeah. I mean, that's. Like, yeah, because even his non playoff too. teams like would go 8 and 8 or 9 and 7 or something like that. Yeah. Right. So maybe he's smart enough not to inherit or take over a job with bad situation, but he never had, I don't think he ever really had those bad years. So, but he's at 618, which is pretty, you know, pretty solid. Very solid. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chuck Knox. Chuck Knox is number 11 on the list. <coughs> How many championships did he win? Uh, there are no championships for Chuck Knox. Okay. But, um, he, he was the Marty Schottenheimer of the 70s. Terrific coach. They Ground Chuck was his nickname because they just they pounded the rock. Um, you know, did it with the Rams throughout the 70s, but like couldn't couldn't get over the hurdle that was the Vikings. They just lost some gut wrenchers to Minnesota in the playoffs. And yep. then he went and took over Seattle. And that's the point probably where you and I would our, you know, our generation has the better memories of him. And you know, had the first really relevant Seahawks teams in the early 80s. And again, the, it was the running game. Kurt Warner, the, the great college back out of Penn State, was the guy they built it around. And, um, yep. you know, a number of uh, nice playoff teams there. Kurt Warner. And remember the Kurt Warner, Jim Zorn, and Steve Largent were your big names. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I remember all those guys were 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 very well known, and I remember Zorn was like one of the few left-handed quarterbacks. Yeah, so, you that's know, right. I had, I had a football card of him. It was kind of cool, you know, that lefty uh, up there. <laughs> I later became, of course, a Redskins head coach. Um, you know, didn't didn't do quite so well there, but um, <laughs> anyway. So Knox is number eleven though, on the all-time list with 186 wins. And he was a 558 winning percentage, like you mentioned. He never did win a title there. Never even made a Super Bowl, actually. But Okay. Um, did Dan Reeves get to 150? Dan Reeves is 10th on the all-time list. Well, okay. All right. 190 wins out of Dan Reeves. And Ooh, a wow. He blew it away. Well, I guess he had that good run in Atlanta, too, where he made a Super Bowl even after. Yeah, he had a long time in Denver and, and Atlanta. Yeah. Um, and he he had a, he only had a 535 winning percentage, so just slightly over 500, which kind of kind of surprised me a little bit. But um, and he did um, he how many championships out of Reeves? Uh, none. Yeah, there none. Were but he, he did four win super. Four. He went to the Super Bowl four times. Yeah, three with LA, yep. and then again with Atlanta, where he lost to yep. LA. So he's on that exclusive list of um, taking two different teams to the Super Bowl, but unfortunately he was 0-4 um, in that in that spot. So, But, yeah, you got him. Um, you've gotten everybody on the, the top ten except for one guy, and the other ones are all modern except for the number 19 guy who's basically an unknown guy for, for us. Um, for, for us in this he's, – he's from a previous generation. <laughs> Okay, is it, is it Ray Flaherty by any chance? Oh, Ray Flaherty, good call. He's not on the 150 list, but he's on a few of these other lists. Ray Flaherty qualified on the 50 win, 650 winning percentage. All right, he, he's so he no relation those, to me, but um, yeah, that's. He was one of those guys that didn't coach for very long, but when he did, was highly successful at it. So he's only one of those 13 on that on that list. Um, Flaherty was. 80 and 37 with five ties, 684 winning percentage, and he coached from 36 to 49. Okay, all right. And who knows? He might have been a player on a couple of those teams too. Oh, he, he probably might have been, yeah. <laughs> um, um, and he did win two championships with the Redskins as well. Of course, he would have been um, the coach on that team that lost the 72 to nothing championship to the – the, 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 yeah, the seventy-three to nothing came to the Bears. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That was in nineteen forty, but then um, the the year after, I believe it was the year after the year before, the Redskins beat the Bears um, and kind of avenged that loss. Yeah, I believe he also would have coached the Redskins the year they were the Boston Redskins, like when they were first founded, and they played their home games in Fenway Park. And of course, with me being a Redskins oh. fan, living in New England as a Red Sox fan, I, I, I've identified the Boston Redskins as like my all-time favorite team of any kind. You know, <laughs> playing their home games in Fenway. <laughs> well, you you are dead on, Dan. He one year, his first year coaching, nineteen thirty-six, the Boston Red Sox. They went seven and five, and it says they played a playoff game, so that must have been the championship, and they lost. But um, he did. Um, he did coach the – and then they moved to Washington the next year. And uh, the next year they were NFL champions in 1937 with the Washington Redskins. First year in D.C., the, the Redskins did win the championship. All right, yeah. That's a good uh, omen for Dan Snyder to move the Redskins back into D.C. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, there we go. That, that, that might be an opening tirade for one of us here one of these times. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I'm – I, I, I think they should just remodel RFK, make it work, put a couple of luxury boxes in there and just start playing, you know, like tomorrow. <laughs> um, other, why don't you go ahead, uh, before we move on further, why don't you give me the obscure one? Because I'm, 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 okay. I'm going to cautiously say I'm wondering if it's Bobby Lane's coach for the Detroit Lions back in the 50s, but I'm not going to guess the name of it. So, Okay, I'll tell you. Um, one, one quick last thing on Ray Flaherty. He actually coached. He also coached the New York Yankees of the AAFC. Really? Um, okay. Four years off or three years off then he, from, from the Redskins. Then he went to the New York Yankees. And his final, his final team he coached in, the, in pro football, 1949, in the AAFC was with the Chicago Hornets, a team that <laughs> – if you, if, you if you went to a home Hornets game, anybody in Chicago, please 
you know, send us a message or something and let us know how they were. Yeah, that's right. And tell us if the jerseys looked anything like those Steeler throwbacks that they insist on bringing out today. Oh, those are awful. Oh, gosh. Yeah. They look like Hornets. <laughs> Um, okay, the last – the obscure guy, everybody else on here is like you, – you definitely know, you know, and it's more of a, a modern – very modern, like, say, in the last 20 years, 15 years. Um, the, the unknown – or the, 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 the guy, 1930 to 1953. So this was a long timer. 24 years, his name is Steve Owen. Are you familiar with Steve Owen? I know the name. Did he coach the Giants? He did. And okay. And when you look at guys like Ray Flaherty and a bunch of these others, it maybe bounced around because, like, quite honestly, there wasn't the stability of leagues back then or the money. Right. But Steve Owen, 24 years, all with the New York football. Ball giant. <laughs> yep. He won 100, 153 games, also had a 605 winning percentage. So he's on a couple of these lists. So he's he deserves a lot of credit. And if anybody is listening to this from New York, um, this is definitely their old timer, like the guy that you you make a statue of and you you put a That's big right, yeah. you put up some sort of a memorial for him around um, in the media guide. <laughs> so you, okay. we've gotten we've gotten everybody. Right? You've gotten everybody except for five guys, and they're all um, that none of them are active, but all of them have been active in the last fifteen to twenty years. So okay, like very, uh, Bill very, Cowher. Bill Cower is on the second list, so he's not on the 150. He he didn't quite have enough wins, but he did have the 600 winning percentage. So Bill Cower, oh, here it is, Dan. <laughs> Talk about a technicality. So Cower had 149 wins. Oh, geez. Yeah, and there's always these rumors, too, that he's going to come back, too. So yeah. <laughs> um, and he, But he had a 623 winning percentage. Ooh, yeah, that's that, that sounds right. Yeah. that's um... so, so he qualifies on that 100 win, 600 winning percentage yep. under that second list that I mentioned. So Cower is um, – but he would be – he's 20th all-time in wins um, just out of the 150 club. Did uh, Tony Dungy make the 150 win list? Tony Dungy is on some of these lists, but not that one. Um, Dungy, Dungy, qual you're you're on the same thing. He's a, he's on the Cower list as well. So okay. not yeah. the wins, but one at a high level. Dungy, 139 on the wins at a 668 winning percentage. That's insane. So That's Dungy insane. really won a lot, and of course he had one Super Bowl. Didn't have a whole lot of playoff success, um, you know, but he did have the one Super Bowl and 139 wins and one at a really high level. Yeah. Okay. But just, we're still um, one, two, one of them. Um, one of them. One, two, three, four. There's five left on the list. Let me just say that um, they're they're all people that you're definitely familiar with. Two of them of. Um, were very prominent coaches in states that you've lived in. Okay. All Another right. So was a, was a prominent coach of a team that you happen to um, enjoy watching and rooting for. Okay. All right. So, 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 the listeners, teams, I should so the listeners know I have lived in Wisconsin, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Massachusetts. An old boss once asked me if I was in the witness protection program. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Mike Holmgren. Mike Holmgren is on the 150 list. Yes. Of it, course. Okay. All right. Wow. 161 wins. And he had a 592, not quite the 600, but 592 winning percent. So Holmgren qualifies under the, the 150 or more wins. Okay. One now you said, you said none of these coaches are active. Correct. Okay, so that throws John Harbaugh out then. So uh, okay, while well, you mention Harbaugh, Harbaugh is on the the hundred win six hundred. Yeah, yeah. So he's another one, not quite to the wins, which he very well will probably get there. But he um, is short on the wins, and let me just get that number for you here. He's one eighteen on the wins and six fifteen on the winning percentage. So he's what he that's why he qualifies under the second list right but he's 32 wins short on the 150 okay 
Um, and he has the, what, two championships? Two. Is that right? Um, no, one. The, the 2012 championship. Okay, that's right, because um, Billick won the other one. Brian Billick won the first yeah, race. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'd say, so McCarthy can't be one of them for this list anyway, Mike McCarthy, because he's back as an active coach. Okay. Um, well, as you're mentioning them, I'll just – McCarthy is on the, the exact same list as the Cowherd. <laughs> We're filling up this 100-win list here as we go. <laughs> now, McCarthy's got – he's actually he, – he does really well on these, like, when you're comparing. He's got 125 wins, so he's not quite to the 150, but odds are, you know, at his age and that he'll probably get to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and 125 wins and a 618 winning percentage. So I remember the famous press conference a couple of years ago when a reporter was kind of jabbing him a little bit for a couple of things. And Mike McCarthy just said, like, with a stoic face, he said, well, with all due respect, um, I, I know what it takes to win at a very high level in this league, sir. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. He was patting himself on the back, but, like, it was pretty justified. He just basically said, I know what it takes to win at a high level in this. <laughs> <league>. <laughs> he done it in a 618 winning clip, and now he's, you know, in Dallas. As, as much as I hate to say, you know, he's got all the tools there to, you know, he's got certainly got um, the weapons there to, to, to mm-hmm. be successful. So, but he's on the other, the other list. Um, yeah, as long as we're filling up this hundred win list, I've got two names that I've been wanting to say because I know they're going to be at least on the hundred win list, and that's John Madden and Chuck Knoll. Okay. One of those, I'll let you decide which one. One is on the 150 win list. The other is on the 100. It, it, win. Noel will be the one on the 150 win list then. Yep, and that's also what my hint was that you lived in the place. Yeah, of- yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, yeah. So, so, so for listeners who may be wondering why it took so long to guess them, you know, with a guy who's won four Super Bowls and all that again, it's like he because he had did so much of his damage in the 1970s, most of it with a 14 game schedule. I didn't know if he was going to have enough you know, cumulative volume to pile up all those wins. Um, and with Madden, yeah, he, Madden got to 100 wins faster than any coach in history. But then, but he retired shortly after that. And of course, we all know him now for his long career in announcing. Yeah. So first with, first on your Noel thing, Noel, um, 193 wins. So he's ninth all time. He, so he, he coached, remember, he coached for a long time. 69 to 91. So he that's actually, right. Oh, yeah, that's right, of course. Yeah, because he, he still had some playoff teams to the 80s. Yeah, geez, I should have. He was four, yeah, he was four decades strong and was even coached like back, he even coached Rod Woodson, for an example. Yeah. So, uh, no, and, and his winning percentage wasn't quite as high, though, as you might think. This one kind of shocked me, too. Um, no one was only 566. With Well, that's where, again, I think the 80s, you know, took a toll on him there. Because, the, I mean, there were some, there was a stretch of some bad teams between like 84 and 89 that where okay. they really struggled. Yep. Yeah. But he, uh, he definitely, he was, he's ninth all time. Now the Madden thing, um, 103 wins. So he barely bumped that 100 wins, but you were right, you know, the quickest one. And his winning percentage his winning percentage was 759. Yeah, I knew it was something ridiculous. Yeah, so he'd be on that 675 list. I mean, Madden won. <clears throat> He's actually the number two guy. I'm not sure what the minimum is on the site for wins. Like I said, guys that are like 2-0 and o don't count. But of the guys that had more than just, you know, say coached a season or two or more, uh, Madden is number two all-time in winning percentage of NFL coaches. At 759. The number one okay. guy is a relatively obscure one. Um, I don't even think it's worth you. No, it's not even worth taking a stab at. Um, and that was a guy named Guy Chamberlain who coached. Yeah, never Canton. even heard the name. <laughs> he was from 1922 to 27, coached the Canton Bulldogs, Cleveland Bulldogs, Franklin, Frankfurt, Yellow Jackets, and Chicago Cardinals. But he his his claim to fame was he was seven eighty four winning percentage. He was fifty eight sixteen and seven, and I believe he was a player as well. So he was like a player coach. Man, <laughs> one eight out of ten games. So that's his claim to fame, as well as four championships. So this, if you want an under the radar great coach of all time, 
It's Guy Chamberlain. Guy Chamberlain could be the man, yeah. Yeah, but he only had um, 58 career wins, so he did it for, like I said, a relative, like six or seven seasons, relatively short time. Okay. All right, so. So we're, um, we talked about him. Um, we're down to three on the 150 win list. Um, okay, all right. Oh, yeah. have, to have, have to dig deep here now. One of them, and, he said, and again, like all of these are like relatively current, like last yeah. 15, 20 years. Yes. Um, one of them coached the Redskins, but he's that's not his primary team he was known for. Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan. I know you're you're not a big Shanahan guy after no. things ended, but Shanahan is, you know, had a lot of success. And, yeah, no, that's lucky he did it in Denver and yeah. And he's Shanahan. on the multiple titles list, too. So, yep. Shanahan had 170 wins and a 552 winning percentage um, and won back to back titles, of course, with Denver. With Denver, yeah. That's right. So, uh, so Shanahan is number 15th all time. There's two on the list. One of them also had the exact same number of wins and uh, at 170. And, um, Actually had two titles. The other guy is a very wild card. No, you'll know the name, but I, I'm shocked that. He's well, okay, so wait. So um, he's got 170 wins, same as Shanahan, and two titles. And two titles, two two Super Bowl championships. I am. I'm going to say Coughlin. Tom Coughlin, good call, Rain Dan. Yep. 170 wins out of Coughlin. Yeah, I mean, he did. It. I mean, he was with the Giants a long time, and of course, he had a good stretch with Jacksonville too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, remember Jacksonville was a was an expansion team. Within two to three years, he had them as like the best team in the AFC. Yeah. No, I mean, they were very quickly a contender. Yeah, maybe four or five. Yeah, four or five, but very quickly. He made the AFC Championship game his second year as, as a believe- coach. And as a notable- Actually, here, here's a few – Tom, Tom Coughlin is like the ultimate giant slayer head coach. When he was in Boston College, they pulled that memorable upset of Notre Dame in 1993 that, um, you know, threw the national championship race yeah. into chaos because Notre Dame was number one. Uh, with Jacksonville, he knocked off the top-seeded Broncos of John Elway and Mike Shanahan in 1996 as an 11-point underdog on the road in the divisional playoffs. And then with the Giants, like, oh, by the way, he simply beat Belichick and Grady twice in the Super Bowl, one of those being the 18-0 and undefeated team that was <laughs> going for, for perfection. So, like, if you, if you got a heavy favorite, Tom Coughlin is not the guy you want to see, you know, around the corner. Oh, and let me add to this, Dan, because, of course, I was at this game. He was the coach of, of the, the New York Giants that ended Brett Favre's career in Green Bay. In Green Bay, that's, yep, that's right. Yeah. In the forty below game, when it went into overtime, and the and uh, far it ended up being Favre's last game in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. So there, th- talk about that. He ended Favre's career. He beat an undefeated team, and he beat Notre Dame. It's like he does all these big things. Yeah, that's right. But most recently, on a on a kind of a <laughs> on a more somber note, he he's kind of run out. He was run out of Jacksonville just recently for basically. Um, being too hard on the players, like being too rigid and oh, because right. yeah, oh, he had been working in the front office, yeah, that's yeah, and oh, he was violating parts of the collective bargaining agreement, like I think essentially having guys um work, you know, work out more than they should have, and I don't, yeah, I, that's I don't want to, you know, I, I don't know all the real specifics, but essentially it was a. Um, the players did not like him. Let me just say that. And, oh yeah, I mean he was old school. It's one of the reasons we always liked yeah. him and everything. But and yeah, he, kind of, no, it's... he was bending some rules, you know, and towards the management favor and that ultimately. <laughs> but great guy. I mean, great coach. And I think you know, I'd still say an ethical guy. You know, even though <coughs> he just basically he's the hardest working man in the room, and he always was. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> okay, who else okay, can so... we come up with here? We have two names left on this list, right? Um, no, we only have one left on the 150 wins list. Then we can maybe just touch on some of these others that are on the other lists. But the okay. other one, um, um, is the shocking one on this. And quite frankly, a coach that, um, I, I did have respect for, but at the end of the tenure, I, I don't care for him anymore. And he's not a coach anymore, but, um, 
Think of um, Jeff Ten Fisher, Tennessee Titans, and St. Louis Rams. Yeah, Jeff Fisher. That he he got over five hundred for his career, huh? He did. Okay. But the the shocking thing is, if, if I said to you, Dan, Rain Dan, tell me the number, the twelfth winningest coach in the NFL history in NFL history. I think Jeff Fisher is about the last name that would come to I know. That, that that I would not have guessed. Well, you know, we once talked about this. He mastered the art of going 8-8 eight and eight, and it was yes. or 9-7. and seven, And it was usually after his team started like 2-6. and six. I mean, right. if there was a meaningless game in November and December, Jeff Fisher is the guy you want coaching that game. He's going to find <laughs> a way to win it. I mean, that's – Yeah, and, and usually that was it, was – it was important to note that that's the way to do it too because had he started some of those years 7-2, and two, and finished eight and eight, the momentum would have been like, oh, we ended on such a bad note. We got to get rid of the coach. As it turned out, though, all those two and six starts or, you know, those rough starts, but then turning to nine and sevens were like, well, well, we were, you know, we we're only uh, the tiebreaker away from the wild card and we were six yeah. and the last seven and, you know, all those things. So he, um, he won a lot of games and I, I, I did have a lot of respect for him in, in Tennessee. Um, Might have been the first Titans coach ever. Um, for, for Tennessee, but then he um, then he went to St. Louis and um, didn't work out so well there, and he had a lot of talent. And and ironically, a year or two after he was gone, you know, the year actually after he left, the the, the Rams were doing immediately things. turned around. Yeah, Sean McVay took over, and they went to the playoffs right away. Yeah. Right away, and then he, of course got them to the Super Bowl two years ago. Yeah, uh, all with you know um, a lot of the same players that that Fisher had access to as well, but didn't quite do as. So, yeah, so that's the whole 150 list um, of 19 now. Um, we've touched on a lot of these other, all these, uh, a lot other lists. And of course, a lot of these guys that we've mentioned are on two, three, and four of these lists. But um, um, how about this? You want to take any more stabs at the hundred win guys? They're not on the 150, but one at a very high level. Yeah, the 100. I do have some more guesses here. I'm thinking Bill Walsh is going to be on that list. Okay. Bill Walsh was another surprising one when I researched this. Uh, hold on, actually, maybe not because, yeah, he was only with the 49ers for 10 years. And that's. Okay. Bill Walsh. Um, Bill Walsh only qualifies in this discussion because he won two or more championships. He doesn't, okay. qualify, he doesn't qualify on any of the other lists that I mentioned which is really surprising to me, but um, he, he only won. Um, give me just one second. Walsh, um, he won under 100. Here it is, 92 games is all he won. Um, he had a 609 winning percentage, so yeah. solid there, but he didn't quite make that 100 win criteria, but he does qualify um, on the two or more championships. How many do you think he won, Dan? Rain His Dan. championships? Yeah. He won three. Yep. He yep. did get three there. Along with Stram and Weeb, Weeb Eubank, they also won three. And Joe Gibbs. Those, okay. are, your, those are your three guys. Three okay. champions. Other guys, um, yeah, that I know are on the list. Um, Mike Tomlin's got to be there somewhere. Okay, great guess. He is on the 100 win, 600 winning percentage. So, okay. yes, that's correct. Um. Um, well, how about our boy, uh, George Allen from the Redskins? Did he get to a hundred wins? That is the great one. And I'm glad you brought him up because yes, he, he's on the list, same list. And, um, let me get this to 116 wins out of George Allen and brace yourself, grab onto something. His philosophy, what was his philosophy on coaching the Red, Redskins? He had, he had a book named after this. I forget the exact, but he hated rookies. Like it was all yeah. about hitting veterans. I read, I read this book in high school and loved it. It's, the future is now. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he, would, he would trade away draft picks, you know, so he could, he, cause he didn't want draft picks. He didn't want rookies. He wanted guys that would win right now. And um, it, it, the famous story is one time he traded away one of his draft picks twice, the exact same pick. <laughs> and, he, and the league he got in trouble by the league for it because they're like, okay, yeah. you've already traded this. So then they had to go back and work it all out and all that. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> George Allen was 116, 47 and five for a 712 winning percentage. 712. 
He is one of only four coaches ever with a 700 or better winning percentage. George Allen. Wow. I would not have guessed that. And um, unfortunately, he well, he got the Redskins to um, he got the Redskins to the Super Bowl. Famous um, playing, you know, Don Shula and the Dolphins, and he lost mm-hmm. uh, that undefeated Dolphins team, but never did quite get his own title. Okay. Um, is um, hmm. is George Seifert on the list? Great call. Also on this list. Okay. okay. All right. The, the 100 wins. Okay. Seifert, 114 wins. 648 winning percentage. Great winning percentage there as well. There's only um, two more on this list, and here's your here's your cue. Ready? This is a member of the 100 wins, 600 or better. Mm-hmm. So now that you got Seifert, there's two left on the list, and they're both active right now as we speak. With 100, okay, and then we have all right, Chief. All right, this actually could be a good way to expedite, you know. So again, so we can uh, cover everything, and you know, not. Um, you know, st- stretch our, our listeners out for a couple of hours or anything. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of think through each team and we'll, we, we will not only hit the two that are active right now, but like anyone else that coached for those franchises that's on the list and we haven't covered. Okay. We'll, we'll bring them up. So, okay. um, so I'll start at the top in the AFC East. Uh, of course, Belichick is already on the list. Um, I don't think I don't think there's going to be anybody else from the Patriots on this list. Um, because Parcells oh, is already there. Chuck yeah. Fairbanks didn't coach long enough to make any yep. or did really even do anything in the NFL. So I apologize, but some of the old timers, I guess, um, I I don't know quite their all of their affiliations for teams. Okay, in all right, eighteen forty or fifty, but yeah, no. No one else with the Patriots, I think, is no. Nope. Okay, yeah, and the Patriots didn't exist until 1960. All the teams in the AFC that we're about to cover, other than a couple exceptions, didn't exist until 1960. So, um, okay, so the the Jets, um, uh, whoever there's who's coaching them right now, Adam Gates. Is, is, yeah. Um, okay, well, it's, uh, but I don't think the Jets have anybody else that would be on that list. No, I don't believe so. The Dolphins definitely don't have an active coach at 100 wins. And I do not think they would have anybody, because Shula has been kind of their only winner through the years, so I don't think they've had anybody else that would have made the list. Um, yep. Buffalo, um, current coach McDermott would not make the list. And we've already covered Levy, so there's nobody else on the list. There is one other guy on the list, and I'll I'll, I'll – um, put this into the form of a trivia question because it's trivia. Okay. I mean, the only coach to win two or more championships and, you know, because remember there's 25 guys that have done that, <laughs> two or more championships and have a sub 500 career record. There's only one. Ooh. And he's got a famous last name if you want to think of a college coach's Okay, now when you say championships, are was that is at least one of them in the Super Bowl era? Um, I no. Okay, it, all right. So it's an old timer then. Yep, and it's ironic that you were right now just talking about the Buffalo Bills because I think that's uh, that's where um, where he's from. Also, he would have won a couple AFL titles, yeah, because they used to have Jack Kemp as their quarterback in the '60s, and they were really good. He won, but I don't. Um, back to back, sixty four and sixty five. You said those were the Kemp teams. Yeah, uh, sixty four and sixty five. Ironically, that was his last year with Buffalo, and then he went to Denver two years later. Six seven. Anyway, back. Oh, I'm gonna guess. Um, oh, think famous <sighs> last name in college ranks right now. Uh Saban, Lou Saban. Lou Saban, rain to yep. Oh, pulled it off. <laughs> Needed some hints, but we got there. <laughs> yep. So he won those two with the Bills, the AFL championships, and yep. um, his career winning percentage was four ninety. So there, there's another. That's a bill though for the for the list. Okay. So what yeah. Do you, 
Uh, which team were you on now? That okay, well, I'm moving to the AFC North. So the Steelers, we've covered Tomlin, that he's on the list, and we've already put Nolan Wait, Cower. Did you already say Tomlin? Yeah. Yeah, we've got him on our 100-win list. Okay, so I'm sorry. He was one of the two actives that, that had 100 wins, 600 winning percentage. I just didn't have him crossed off. So. Oh, okay. But All right. he, is on, he is on that list um, of the – not quite 150 wins, but over a 600 winning percentage. So there's only one left then. Okay, so the Ravens, we covered John Harbaugh and you crossed yep. him off the list. Okay. Um, Brian Billick wouldn't have made any of these lists. I don't nope. Think. Nope. He didn't make any. Um, yeah, so they wouldn't have made any. Uh, Cleveland, the Browns. Yeah, Schottenheimer was the only one that I can think of. And certainly who's over there now is um, not on the list. Um, Correct. Cincinnati. Um, I kind of wonder if Marvin Lewis got to 100 wins, but there's no way he would have met the winning percentage criteria. Um, That's right. He, he didn't get to the 150 wins, and he doesn't, met, he doesn't make it because of winning percentage on the others. Yeah, and yeah, and Sam White. Sam Weish wouldn't have won enough to make this list, so they don't have any. Wouldn't have anybody else. Correct. Um, okay, we'll move to the AFC South. The Colts uh, covered Dungy, put him on the one hundred win list. Um, I don't think there's going to be anybody else there. Um, Ted Marshabrod is the only one significant in the past that I can think of. Shula and Eubank, if we go way back to their days in Baltimore, we've already covered. Okay, uh, the Houston Texans, not going to have anybody on the list. Tennessee Titans, Brable's there. Um, we already covered Fisher, so no, they're, they're done. Jacksonville, we've covered Coughlin, who's over there currently. It's not going to be on the list. Moving to the AFC West, the Chiefs, we covered Andy Reid, covered Marty. Um, covered Hank Stram, so I think that kind of covers their coaching, you know, legends yeah. there. The Raiders, John Raiders. Gruden. John John Gruden does he does he have a hundred wins? Oh, good call. He he is not on the list. Um, I guess I'll have to. And he's of course active again. So I remember I always like to compare him to John Madden because. Both named John, both had Raiders. Raiders coach, yeah. Won a lot, kind of feisty guys, you know, both announcers for Monday both Night. Both announcers, both very popular announcers, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, someday we'll. Other than that, there's no similarities, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but John Gruden, um, he's got 106 wins now, and he's got a 510 winning percentage and only one championship. So none of those marks is good enough for our for our best of all time list. Right. Okay. Well, Tom Flores is going to be on the multiple championships list. I've right. like had him written down here like this whole show waiting to uh, jump on him. He's a guy I always yeah. thought was very underrated. So Yeah, Tom Flores, um, so he won two Super Bowls with the Raiders, right? Yep. And he also, didn't he, he had some success with Seattle as well. Uh, a success would probably be stretching it. I think that was kind of a unfortunate. I think for him, that was kind of like Ditka going to the Saints. It was kind of an unfortunate, you know, ending. Okay. Um, let me. Flores was 97 and 87 career, so he didn't get that 100 wins and just barely over 500. And, um, well, yeah, this... Rain Dan, you win this argument. You, you win this, uh, this little thing. Here were, he was at Seattle for three years. They went two and fourteen, six and ten, six and ten. Yeah, they drafted so, Rick Meyer out of Notre Dame, and it didn't work out. And yeah, so that that killed his winning percentage right there. So yeah, but he did win two titles. And I'll also, I'm going to check this guy off too because you've already mentioned him. Jimmy Johnson only qualifies on these great coaches list by virtue of winning his two championships. Okay, I was like, he might have made the six seventy five winning percentage, but I think his time with the Dolphins would have. Well, and he had that one in fifteen year with the Cowboys. I was just going to say, don't you remember nineteen eighty nine with the Cowboys? Yeah, that's right. So there, there's too many things that were dragging him down there. Okay. Yeah, but he did win the two two titles with Dallas, right? Yeah. Um, the Chargers did Don Coryell get to hundred victories? 
Coriel is not on the list. So, um, okay. um, sorry, I'm just uh, look. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson had 80 total wins and the two championships, but uh, Coriel. Remember, he, Coriel, of course, coached those really high, exciting, um, you know, San Diego teams, but he actually mm-hmm. never got him to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, he was the mentor, the, one of the, the big mentors for Joe Gibbs, one of you yeah. and I's favorite. And, you know, a lot of the modern passing game um, offensive strategies, I think you can attribute back to, to Eric Coriel. But um, didn't qualify really on any of our lists. I'm doing a quick search here. He was um, 111. 80 and 83 so he's real close 111 wins with a 572 which is a great winning percentage. okay all right yeah so he's one of, he's one of he's kind of one of those notable uh you know omissions so. yeah i'll put him on the other notables but he um and also remember he was with the cardinals who yep. weren't, made, weren't really the a good playoffs there team, yeah but uh still managed a 1973 to 86 managed a 572 winning percentage and over 100 wins and um it has gibbs under his under his wing as a as his coaching tree. So, um, Denver, I think we've covered everybody there. Um, Shanahan Reeves, um, current coach is not going to be on the list. Um, Red Miller didn't coach long enough to make it. Nope. I don't think John Ralston did either. Okay. So we'll shift gears to the NFC, our skins. We've got Joe Gibbs. We've got George Allen Got Mike Shanahan, I guess. Um, Ray Flaherty. Ray Flaherty, my man. Yep, that's right. And we certainly know who's ever coached there in the last 25 years is not on this list. So, uh, that's, uh, I love the guy, but um, Richie Pettibone didn't quite make it. No, Richie, <laughs> Richie didn't he came up 97 wins short to the 100 win mark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just, uh, okay. wins, just like me. I'm just 100 wins short of 100 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Dallas. Uh, we got Landry. We got Jimmy. We got McCarthy being the current guy is already on our list. Yep. Uh, we got Parcells. Um, they're not going to have anybody else that would have. Well, hold it. Jason Garrett lasted a long time in mediocrity. He, I can't yeah. imagine Jason Garrett won enough, enough games to get on that list. No, Garrett's not on it. Okay. Uh, uh, oh. you, you can keep talking through your thing, and I'll I'll, I'll follow up with it. But he's at. Weish, you mentioned Weish before, 84 wins out of Weish. Bum Phillips, another notable. Yeah. But Bum was 82 and 77. Considered okay. Considered Campbell in his prime, um, a 516 winning percentage, never making a Super Bowl. Myself, I'm going to rule Bum Phillips coaching as uh, basically a failure. Or not. <laughs> failure might be a, a little bit of a stretch. but <laughs> no, I, yeah, I guess that's the wrong term. I would just say. Wasn't really a success, or definitely not yeah. on this list. So, right? No. Yeah. Oh no, he's not in this list. He was more just kind of a fun guy with his cowboy hat and everything. And, and he's tied with um, Wani, Dave Wanstat, with both of those guys with eighty-two wins. Wani. I was wondering how far Wanstat would get up, and he he was going to be another one like Jason Garrett. I thought if he makes this list, it's just going to blow the whole credibility of our list right there. So it's. Uh, no, exactly. Um, okay, so Philadelphia, the Eagles. Um, Garrett, I'm sorry, I'll interrupt you now. Jason Garrett had 85 wins, 85 and 67. Um, so 559 winning percentage. And he's uh, just behind, two wins behind Jack Party and Ted Marchabroda, a couple other names there. Okay. All right. Uh, Dick Vermeil, is he on it? Dick Vermeil, he, he belongs on the other asterisk list. He does okay, not yeah, that's exactly. I knew he didn't get to 100 with Philadelphia, which is where the bulk of his coaching career would have came from. But then, of course, he does win a Super Bowl with the Rams. He had another surge with the Chiefs. Yep. Right? So I thought maybe he snuck in and got to 100 wins. So, no, Vermeil did have 100 wins. But remember, when uh, on the on these parameters, you have to have a 600. Oh, you got it right. You got to have 60%. Yeah. So, that's so right. Vermeil had 120 wins, ranking him 34th all time. But only a 524 winning percentage and only one title. So none of those right. – he doesn't meet any of the – Yeah, but he's a great one for the asterisk list. I'm putting him under the – he's now the fourth guy on the asterisk list. Okay, all right. So the Giants, I think we've covered everybody they've had that could have qualified. Coughlin, Parcells. Um, yep. 
There's really only one more notable guy, two more notable guys on the list. One is currently active. Um, one is currently active in the NFL, and the other is is still around. No, <laughs> I don't. Okay. Want to... All right, we're getting close to being through the the league here. Uh, okay. NFC. You haven't missed them yet. I'll say that much. You haven't. Okay. All right. NFC North, Green Bay. We know they've got uh, Lafleur's just gotten there. We know we've got Holmgren. We got McCarthy covered. Sherman didn't coach long enough to be there. Of course, we got Lombardi, Curly Lambeau. Yep. Yeah, it's so not, it's we're, not so we're, yeah, we're set there. Bears um, got, you know, Ditka's an asterisk. He didn't quite make it. Papa Bear, of course, we've covered. They definitely haven't had anybody else. Um, Vikings, we've got Bud Grant. Mm hmm. Did Dennis Green, could he be one that uh, might have qualified anywhere? Good call. 113 wins, 546 winning percentage, never won a Super Bowl. So He again, was who I thought he was. <laughs> he is who he thought he was. <laughs> and the, with the most legendary quote, along with Jim Mora, you know, there's about... Yeah. <laughs> Jim Mora's playoffs and Herm Edwards play to win the game. Yeah. Yes. But 113 wins, 546. Um, so a very solid career. Of course, um, I'll go to Rain Dan on this one. Dan, can you name um, at least two colleges that Dennis Green coached at? Uh, I won't get two. I know he coached at Stanford. Okay. They're both smart schools. Another one is Northwestern. Okay. Or actually, yeah, that, that, that does ring a bell now, now that you say it. Yeah. Yeah, he coached at these really highly, you know, these big, big-time uh, – Smart school, Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Detroit, the Lions. Um, could they have had anybody? I mean, Wayne Fonts wouldn't probably wouldn't have won enough. They certainly haven't had anybody lately. Right. It's it's not a lion. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna be a lion. Uh, I won't torment their fans anymore by walking through their whole history or anything. <laughs> okay, teams in the NFC South. Sean Payton. It is Sean Payton. He's our active he's, guy. Okay. He's the the active guy. Um, Sean Payton is on the shorter duration, but 600 winning percentage. Um, and he has, just one second. Um, Sean Payton, 131 for wins. So he'll, mm -hmm. he's going to get, he's going to get the 150 for sure. I would say. Um, and he's a 630 winning percentage. And, has okay, a, yeah. and he's, he won a Super Bowl and he hasn't lost any Super Bowls. So, and um, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of Saints fans out there that would argue that maybe the, the last two years he probably was robbed out of it maybe going to another Super Bowl. Yeah, well, he definitely was a couple of years ago in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, right? in the 20, uh, what would that be, the 20, 2018 season. Yeah. 2018 season, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, he, so he's, he's, a 630 winning percentage, 131 wins. I'm sure he'll get 19 more. I mean, that's yeah. that's only two more years that the rate he's going. So, um, but yeah, he's the last guy. So, um, so a couple other things. There's, I'll, I'll mention just a few other names, and and again, um, some date back. So you just have to research them. Yeah, let's round out like everybody else that we didn't get to that uh, okay. has made the list. So the so on the six the the, the 50 win guy, 650 winning percentage. Um, so those are guys that didn't coach very long, but did it at a very high level. There's a couple other names we didn't mention. Feel free to interrupt me if you know any. Sure. There's Tommy Huguet, 694. Blanton Collier, 691. And some of these guys also might have been like AAFC, AAFL guys. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, then there is um, J.L. Howell. Oh. <laughs> And um, it's Jim Lee Howell. And, and oh, Rose. okay. All right, Jim Lee Howell. Yeah, I know the name. I want to say Giants is where he coached, but uh, he was an old-timer. Good call on that. Giants never had a losing season, and he wanted a 663 clip, but it was only over seven years. Okay. Then the other one, um, Roy Andrews. He was Kansas City Blues, Kansas City Cowboys. We're going back to the 20s and 30s on him, but he did have win at a um, – um, Andrews wanted a 654 clip. So he's the 
and it's 650 or higher. So he's the last of the guy of the 15 that qualify on that list. Um, the two plus championships, I think we pretty much talked about <coughs> most of these guys. Some of the old timers were, um, here's one, you know, Gary Neal. Yeah, I'm, sorry. Heard the name. <clears throat> I'm sorry, better name than what I, but what I came with greasy Neal, <laughs> greasy Neal, <coughs> Buddy Parker and Jimmy Konzelman. I've heard the name Buddy Parker. Can't quite place it, you know, for where he coached, but somewhere Buddy in my Parker. reading. I... Actually, Buddy Parker, Greasy Neal was in the 40s and 50s. Buddy Parker, 49 through 64. And Jimmy Konzelman, um, 1921 through 1948. And um, they all won two titles, all those guys I mentioned there. Okay. So um, now – uh, just a couple of things that we, as we wrap up here, if that's good. Buddy. Yep, yeah, a little housekeeping here, okay. absolutely. A little housekeeping. So, um, and, and I'll put them in the form of trivia questions um, as we wrap up. Um, so, who are the top five, and I've kind of given some, we've mentioned some along the way, who are the top five in winning percentage of all time with no limit on wins? Just as long as they coach, let's say, at least three seasons. Oh, okay. Um, and they're um, <clears throat> um, not going to do well on this question, I don't think. And I'm not going to, okay. you know, take a lot of time. But I'm going to oh. say what Belichick. Gonna... What's up? I'm going to guess Belichick. Nope, Belichick's not on there. Okay, Gibbs. Um, um nope. Okay. It's these are top. I've got to be. I got to think back like old timers when you could really dominate. Yeah, I'll just say you know everybody on this list except number one, who I already gave you before. Guy Chamberlain's number one on the list. Right. Yeah. Okay. From, and then, uh, from the twenties, he's seven eighty four. Um, number two, Raiders announcer, John Madden. Number yep. three, um, huge in <laughs> all the championships with uh, the the Green Bay Packers. Vince. Yep. Lombardi. Vince is number three on this winning list at 738. Number four, Redskins. Didn't coach as long, but... Um, George Allen. George Allen's number four. And wow. number five is the, the real humdinger here. So he qualifies on this list, and just in this category. Um, and he is currently a coach, but not in the NFL. And not in any pro league. Whoa. He wanted a really high level for a short amount of time, and he's currently a coach somewhere else. See if current, see if Rain Dan can pull that one. Oh my gosh. Um, 2011 to 2014 this is his pro years, and he is a 44 19 and 1 at a 695, darn near a 70 per, 7 out of 10 winning percentage. 695, and a famous brother, the only brother-brother combo on the list. Yeah, man, my, my <laughs> brain is losing it. So so viewers who tune into this down the line, just so you know, it's about 11 p.m. like in the East Coast yeah. where I'm recording right now. So if my brain is locking up right now. I'm about to like smack myself for not getting this here. Think Big Ten football. Oh, geez, Jimmy Harbaugh. Jimmy Harbaugh has the number five. Jimmy H, the khaki pants. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Khaki, he's a 695 winning percentage. Um, only <laughs> four years, but he's fifth all time in winning percentage. So he qualifies under under that part of the list. Um, then there's a Tommy Huguet, I don't know, from 1920 to 24 that's right behind mm -hmm. Harbaugh, 694. So I thought I thought Harbaugh was a real unique one, though, in that sense. Um, so, um, two other real quick housekeeping items. Name the most career wins of any coach. So, who's got the most wins of a coach that's under 500? And my hint will be he is currently a coach in the NFL, I believe, but he's an assistant. He's had a lot of assistant jobs. And he's the... The highest win total of anybody of all time, but has a below 500 record. <laughs> and 
and you know him, you know him well. Yeah, again, brain just not. No, I, I mean, hard. I mean, Rain Dan, we're putting we're putting old Rain Dan on the spot here late at night here. Um, think um, Cowboys, Redskins, Chargers. That's Norv right Turner. Next. Norv Turner. Norvell. Okay. <laughs> Norvell Turner. Well, is he still an assistant in the NFL? Because I know he had been the coordinator at Minnesota, and then he left there. And I, I wasn't aware where he had gotten hired back anywhere. I could be wrong on that. I guess that's something maybe. Okay. I, I thought he was still an assistant somewhere, maybe an offense, like offensive quality controller. Oh, and he's okay. If it's something like that, he's got to be working in the league somewhere. Well, yeah. We'll have to look it up, but he's still not that old, I don't think. But um, he's. 38th all-time on the wins with um, 114, so a lot mm -hmm. of wins there. But he's 122 losses and one tie, so he's 483, and he's the top guy without a winning record. And you got to scroll down then to Lou Saban's number two on that list with nine. Um, so he's the only guy with 100 wins and a losing record, basically to summarize yeah. that. Okay, so this is I want to kind of. Um, Maybe another show we can kind of rank guys or come up with. That's what I was thinking, yeah, uh, okay. you know, telling the listeners, uh, you know, an idea that I'm kicking around here and I'm going to, you know, do things that network people always do, which is tell Steve about it on the air for the first time, is I'm thinking about <laughs> like a show idea and, and call it, like, since this is the podcast of the Sports Notebook, call it the Notebook Nine, where we rank our best yeah. nine of like anything, you know, like it, yeah. obviously NFL coaches would be one of them, like best Super Bowls, best World Series. Yeah. You know, all of that. And then, you know, real, that's, so that's a series that um, really want to start developing here, you know, moving forward now into the summer and, and the fall. So, yeah. So, oh. yeah, so definitely a notebook nine on NFL coaches is a terrific place to start because it's going to be it tough, be a, you know, winnowing that list down. List. I think Belichick would have to be on that for sure. And, um, and, you know, some of these other big names like Hallis and that, but um, anyway, so here's the, here's the final question. This is the gold standard. There's only four on this list, and we've kind of covered all this in different segments of this, but I'm looking for coaches that had 200 wins. So we're talking very elite world mm -hmm. around a long time. 200 wins. They won two-thirds of their games, so 667 mm -hmm. or better winning percentage, and they had two or more titles. There's only four guys on the list. Okay. 200 wins. 667 and a two plus championships. Okay, Lombardi's gonna be one. Nope. Remember, he's only 97 wins or so. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Yeah. He's 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 not he didn't quite have the longevity or all the wins. Um yep. Shula? Yeah, of course, Shula. He he did get to he won two thirds of his games, I wondered, because again, once he got to the age of parity in the eighties and the early nineties, it was tough to yeah, he, he was six. At that level. He was six seventy-seven, so he was just just over the two thirds, three hundred twenty-eight wins. Now, where he's a little bit lacking, the only the reason why he's probably not held in even greater regard than what he is is he only he only had two championships, and that right. was what was the other one, Dan? Besides the seventy-two Dolphins, um, the seventy-three Dolphins, they won back to back. Oh, back to back. Okay. Yeah. Well, he never won one with the Colts, but he got them there. Is that yeah? Because right? well, he's the yeah he uh, like he carries the burden. They lo he's the coach that lost to Namath in that epic That's Super Bowl right. upset that we talked okay. about earlier. So he got yeah. the two Super Bowls. Anyway, so yes, yeah, Shula's on there, um, and there's three others that are all, you know, people we've talked about earlier in the show and pretty fairly obvious. One is fairly obvious guy today, right now. Andy Reid. Well, no, Andy Reid doesn't have two titles. He's the only one won. Yep. Right in your backyard there, Dan. Belichick? Yeah. Belichick, well, Belichick does have two-thirds. Okay. I've, again, like, I, it's still so hard for me to believe sometimes that winning winning two out of every three over a 20-year stretch is just so hard that it still yeah. like, just amazes me that guys in the modern era, you know, pull that off. It really is. He's 673 for a winning percentage, 273 wins, and yeah. six titles. Jeez. Okay. Um, the, um, other two, the other two are one's um an older guy that we talked about from like the 50s, 60s, uh, or 60s, 70s. It's gonna be Paul Brown. Paul Brown. Yeah. Seven titles if you include those 
Um, those ones we talked about, 672 winning percentage, 213 wins. So he's barely over the 200, but he, he qualifies. And there's one last one on the list, um, number two all time in the wins from down in Chicago. Palace, yeah, the Palace. Papa Bear. Yeah. So I guess for our for our notebook nine, that those four are going to be really hard for me to exclude um, because mm-hmm. they. <laughs> Because they meet the criteria of over 200 wins, which is very elite, 667 winning percentage, and they have two or more championships. Yeah, that's right. So, but of course, it's not just picking the nine; it's then ranking them once you get sure. there. So that that'll be a uh, that'll be a good show for us to have. Uh, yeah, up. like those four that we just said there. Like, good luck trying to rank those. Four. I know. Yeah, then to, to start to split hairs, you know, ranking them and everything from from that. Point yeah. Forward. And, um, so um, yeah, so that was that was kind of it for the the list. Um, those, so we covered here a total. I think there was one more added that I hadn't talked about. So I think there's 40, 45 coaches that we've discussed on the main list, as well as a couple of those um, extra guys that we put on. You know, the Marv Levy, Mike Ditka, Don Coriel, and Dick Vermeil. So it's around fifty coaches that we talked about. And I think of the all-time greats, I, I, I would I think we pretty much covered them. If you're there's, you have to think if you did not make it on one of these lenses, I mean, it's not that like our asterisk list was certainly notable, but like right. if you did not qualify under, and frankly, probably multiple of these different five lenses, you don't have a case to be like the best coach of all time. I mean, that's right. just, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, so like, yeah, again, there's guys like Jeff Fisher that you're not going to rank very high that did make it, but like, you know, that I'd rank behind like a Ditka or a Levy. But yeah, again, certainly this is a very minimum requirement to get into consideration for, you know, for the notebook nine. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, and uh, you know, the, a lot of the guys made multiple lists, but, you know, the ones that really surprised me the most were probably uh, definitely Jeff Fisher, you know, him being 12th all time in wins. And then um, Jim Harbaugh being fifth all time in winning percentage, you know, being there for four years. Yeah, that. I mean, that. Now that you say that, like that doesn't surprise me because they were they won at such a high level. And again, the classic case of like he just got out so quickly. And yeah, who knows? He could he could be back soon if Michigan doesn't start beating Ohio State anytime soon. <laughs> he might be looking for his next uh, job, which is in the NFL. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, and Lou Saban winning twice, two championships, but then having a below five hundred record and. Um, so some interesting thing, and Norv Turner, because you know you and I followed Turner throughout his career, both um, against him when he was when he was with the Cowboys and rooting for him with the Redskins, and then of course he's had several other teams, including the Chargers and the uh, Raiders. Team. Yeah. Raiders, yeah. I mean, if you include assistant jobs, I think Norv Turner's probably been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's pretty widely accomplished as a coordinator, and like, and he was okay as a head coach. So, um. But yeah, great topic, Steve. That was um, definitely, again, like just like our baseball one, um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to the first episode of Trivia Time, uh, Steve had a question regarding Major League Baseball players. It was kind of geared toward the 1980s, but we opened it up and talked about, you know, we're back into the 70s and even a little further beyond. So you get a chance to take a look at that. And um, you get a chance, uh, go over to Facebook, uh, like our page on Facebook. These podcasts get posted there. We post articles and updates every day. And of course, visit the sportsnotebook.com and you can uh, check out great 1980 sports moments. Uh, that is the book that I have written here. So that's available on Amazon. You can get it in uh, print, Kindle, uh, audio. Uh, I do the narration for it all eight hours. So, um, Again, read. just you know, you know, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or just directly, you know, which is even better at the sportsnotebook.com. Come on by and visit us, and let's just keep uh, talking sports nostalgia and keep the memories going. So, until next time, we'll we'll see you all soon.